Hi everyone, today Health Ninja is going to teach about the gynecology lesson 1, uterine fibroid. Before going to learn about, let's recall your anatomy knowledge of uterus. Uterine fibroids, or leiomyomas, are non-cancerous or benign growths of the myometrium of uterus, which is a smooth muscle layer. Fibroids are common, being detectable clinically in about 20% of women over 30 years of age. Fibroids are estrogen-dependent and therefore undergo shrinkage after the menopause. They are composed of muscle and fibrous tissue. It can vary in size, ranging from small and undetectable to large masses that can distort the shape of the uterus. Fibroids can also arise separately from the uterus, especially in the broad ligament, possibly from embryonal remnants. Let's talk about the pathophysiology. Exact etiology of fibroids is not fully understood, but various factors are believed to contribute to their development. Genetic predisposition or family history, hormonal influence, estrogen and progesterone, female sex hormone, stimulates the growth and development of fibroids. Race and ethnicity. African American women have a higher risk menstrual changes early menarche and late menopause, obesity, smoking. Risk factors can be classified as modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. Modifiable risk factors are smoking, alcohol consumption, obesity, environmental toxin exposure, diet and lifestyle. Non-modifiable risk factors are genetic factors, race and ethnicity, age and hormonal changes and reproductive factors like nulliparity. They typically present with a characteristic world appearance. Typical world appearance may be altered following degeneration. Red degeneration follows an acute disruption of blood supply during active growth, often in mid-second trimester of pregnancy. Presents with sudden pain, tenderness, pyrexia, and leukocytosis. Symptoms resolve without surgical intervention. Hyaline degeneration occurs as the fibroid outgrows its blood supply, may progress to central necrosis, leading to cystic spaces. Calcification is the final stage in the natural history. It may be incidentally detected on abdominal X-ray in postmenopausal women. Rarely, malignant or sarcomatous degeneration can occur with the highest suspicion in the postmenopausal period, especially if there is a rapidly increasing size of the fibrite. Incidence of malignant, degeneration is less. Fibroids are classified according to the site of myometrium. Submucosal fibroids, those are adjacent to and bulging into the endometrial cavity. Intramural fibroid, which is centrally within the myometrium. Subserosal fibroid are at the outer border of the myometrium pedunculated fibroid attached to the uterus by a narrow pedicle containing blood vessels. Cervical fibroids arise from the cervix. Let's talk about symptoms and signs of uterine fibroids. Heavier or prolonged periods, intermittent bleeding, pelvic pain or pressure, frequent urination or difficulty emptying the bladder, backache or pelvic pain or leg pains, pain during intercourse, enlarged abdomen or uterus, subfertile or recurrent miscarriages. On general examination, usually anemia symptoms like pallor, pale conjunctiva, gingivitis, brittle nails are examined. On abdominal examination, palpable mass is detected. On bimanual examination, Enlarged asymmetrical uterus can be palpated. Investigations. Binal. Mostly clinical symptoms and sign are used for the diagnosis. Then, usually full blood count is investigated to check hemoglobin level. Then we can go for the imaging studies such as ultrasound scan, which can be transvaginal ultrasound scan or transabdominal ultrasound scan. MRI scan provide detailed images of the uterus and size and location of fibroids.
hysteroscopy is done to take a tissue sample for biopsy or to remove small fibroid or polyp. Patient with asymptomatic fibroids usually repeat clinical examinations or ultrasound after a 6-town 12-month intervals. Symptomatic patient will manage as medically, surgically, or radiologically. As medical management, tranexamic acid or mefenamic acid, OCP, G and RH agonists, mifepristone can be used. As surgical management, myomectomy or hysterectomy can be done. Radiological management is uterine artery embolization. GnRH agonist inhibits the estradiol production and reduce the estrogen, but it is not tolerated by all women because of severe menopausal symptoms. Hysterectomy and myomectomy can be facilitated by GnRH agonist pretreatment over a three-month period to reduce the bulk and vascularity of fibroids. As surgical management, there are three options. First is hysteroscopic removal. Menorrhagia associated with a submucous fibroid or fibroid polyp should be treated by hysteroscopic removal. Second one is myomectomy. For a bulky fibroid uterus, particularly when fertility preservation is required, myomectomy is the choice. Last one is hysterectomy. For a bulky fibroid uterus, particularly when fertility preservation is not required, hysterectomy is done. Uterine artery embolization reduce fibroid size and menstrual blood loss. There are some complications such as pain, fever, infection, fibroid expulsion, potential ovarian failure. Careful counseling is also required for women wishing to retain fertility.